Okay. All right. We're going to give this a shot. Welcome to Oak Canyon Nature Center. This is uh, a video for my environmental biology lab at Fullerton College. Uh, I'm here on location without you today because um, of the coronavirus uh, lockdowns and stuff that's going on. So you can't be with me today, so I'm going to try to uh, take you around, do a little travel log. Uh, so that you can at least learn about this place and then when everything calms down you can come back on your own. But you are going to be doing an assignment today and I want to talk with you about that. There is um, a, an assignment I, I want you to uh, be referring to uh, while you're watching this lab and you can get it on the Canvas, on the Canvas website for the course. It's the uh, Oak Canyon plant distribution study so you need to have this uh, on hand, uh, on my recommendation is you print it out because you're going to be using a, a practice map. So we're going to be doing the, the first part of this activity today, which is we're going to focus on two skills. And the first skill is we're going to learn how to use a, a topographic map, and I'll show you what that is. And then the second skill is to be able to identify about a dozen uh, plants that uh, are here, native plants that are here in the canyon. So let's talk about a topographic map first. If you turn to page, I think it's page five of your packet, you'll see this topographic map, and I want to talk with you about that. So uh, you're going to need to zoom in on this. So I'll try to hold it stationary so you can zoom in on this. And um, so the topographic map is, uh, let me kind of explain this. You'll see a lot of these little wavy lines on here. These lines, what they indicate is they indicate elevation. So for example, there's a line here, or there's a number here, 700. And the 700 is a value is associated with this heavy line. That means that anywhere along this line is 700 feet above sea level. So if I were, for example, if I were to take a, a spray can and paint this line on the canyon, which is uh, behind you, uh, then if I were to walk along that line, then I would never go up or down, but I'd have to do a lot of changes in direction and so on. So that's what these lines mean. It means uh, a, a given elevation, uh, above sea level. There's another line above here too, another heavy line, and I'm going to mark that down for you. And that's 800 feet above sea level. So we have a 700, uh, 700 foot topographic line and an 800 foot topographic line. And so what that means is if I were to go in the canyon and walk from 700 uh, foot to 800 feet, then I'm obviously I'm going to be going up in elevation. Now the uh, thinner lines in between are increments of uh, 20 feet. So for example, if I go from the 700 foot line to the 800 foot line, I'm going to cross over five or four, five topo lines, or, or at least uh, four... Uh, five increments of elevation increase. So we go from 700, 720, 740, 760, 780, and 800. Okay. So you kind of get the idea. Now, uh, notice that in some places the topographic lines are really close together. In other places, like here, the topographic lines are far apart. And what that means is that for when the topographic lines are close together, there's a faster change in elevation, which means that you have a steeper incline. When the topographic lines are farther apart, then you have a more a gradual or a slower change in elevation, which means that it's a, it's, it's a gradual slope. So we're we'll going to work on this. Uh, and but before we uh, locate ourselves, I want to also talk with you about some of the other items on this map, one of, of which is this set of parallel lines, dashed lines, that run across uh, the map. 
And what these lines indicate is a road. And this road actually, I'm going to point to it, um, this road actually comes out in the parking lot. This is an older topographic map. That road has been converted and changed. But I want you to, uh, if you could look and pan over to that second lane in the parking lot. That second lane in the parking lot is about the, the right location for where that road used to extend north into this uh, part of the canyon. So that that road being is, let me uh, come on back. So I am standing with my back facing north. I'm standing with my back facing north, which means that uh, to my right or to your left, that is west over there. And then in this direction, that is east over here. So what I want to point out is that that road that I just indicated is to my west, which means I'm standing east of that road. Now there's another land, so that's this road here that I'm referring to. There's another landmark that also is indicated on this map, and this is a solid parallel lines here. That is another road, and that's behind me, over here. And if, if you um, zoom in to where I'm pointing, you can see a fence, that chain link fence. That chain link fence runs right along that road. So what it's showing is that the road is to my north. So let's come back to the map here. So this road here is to my north, because north is behind me. That, this road over here is to my west. So what that means is I'm standing just south of this road and just east of this road, which would put us about right here on the map. So you should take your uh, topographic map, your practice topographic map, and go to page five, that's your, your practice map, and jot, put a dot at this location which represents the parking lot. Okay. So that's the first point on our topographic map. And then what we're going to be doing is traveling south which is that way, which is this down on this map. We're going to be traveling south, and we're going to be stopping along the way and locating several other points on this map, and you're going to need to kind of keep track of that on your practice topographic map. Also, while we're walking, I'm going to be pointing out some of the native plants along the way, but this will get us started on the topographic map. Okay, so I want to let's start doing some plant identification here, uh, and I just wanted to point out this tree here. Um, it's a, a what's called a coast live oak. Uh, that's kind of why they call this Oak Canyon. If you look around, you'll see that there are many, many, many coast live oak trees in the canyon, and um, they call it a live oak because it's an evergreen. That is, it has its leaves all year round. It doesn't lose its leaves in the winter time. Uh, some of the characteristics of this, and if you look in your uh, packet, you'll see there's pictures of trees. So look in your packet for uh, the coast live oak, and they're labeled. Um, ways that you can, I, can recognize this tree are the, the very, very heavily wrinkled bark. It's got lots and lots of cracks in the bark. And then also the leaves, and we're going to take a close-up of one of the leaves in a moment. Um, let's see, you were going to try to get this leaf here? Maybe. So, uh, the leaves are... Uh, kind of curved as you can see, sort of cup shaped. And they've also got spines on the leaf margins, these little pokey uh, 
pointy things on the leaf margins. That's one way to, to another way to tell coast live oaks is they have very distinctive kind of cup-shaped leaves. Okay, we're going to do a, a location on our topographic map. We've been, uh, I've been walking south uh, from this location. I've been walking south on this road. And I'm now just a little bit south of the nature center behind me that you can see. Uh, on this path, on this road that we pointed out before. So if you take a sort of a pan of the area to establish our location, then I'll make a mark on the, our topo map. Okay, so we're on, to get your topo map, make, mark this, make this mark. We are about, uh, about right here on the road. Okay, so that's our second spot. We've walked south, this is our first spot here. We've walked south, now we're on the road, uh, just a little bit south of the nature center. Okay, so we're going to uh, leave from that, that, that last spot and then we're going to walk up this trail uh, and we're going to be moving due east on this trail and then up on the canyon wall. So uh, here's another plant for us to identify. This is coastal sagebrush, and uh, you can recognize it. It's got uh, very light-colored leaves that are also sort of needle-like. And if you uh, rub it, if you when you get a chance to come here on your own, if you rub it uh, and then smell your fingers, it has a very very sweet fragrance to it. So you should enjoy that. And did I already point out the hillside up here? <laughs> I probably did. It's, uh, much of this canyon wall up here is also covered with coastal sagebrush. Okay, so uh, here's another plant. This is easy. This is prickly pear cactus. Uh, prickly, this is the only cactus that we're going to see here at Oak Canyon. Uh, prickly pear cactus is an important cover plant. It's also uh, for uh, wood rats and other little small animals that live here. It provides shade, especially during the hot seasons. Um, and it's also an important nectar plant because it produces uh, flowers in the spring. We don't see any flowers on there yet. Um, and uh, the, the fruits are also, they call them prickly pears because they are, they've got little prickles on them. Those are the needles on the fruit and uh, they're sweet. Okay, so here's another plant. This is black sage, black sage. And um, you can identify this. Right now it doesn't have any flowers yet, but it has um, kind of smallish leaves, a little bit darker than we saw with a coastal sagebrush. Also a very fragrant. Sages are, are uh, in the mint family. And uh, so mints have a sort of a quality of having flavorful and aromatic smells to them and stuff and they're often used in cooking. If you rub this one and smell uh, your fingers, it has a very, very strong smell to it. So black sage. Okay, this, this, is, uh, this is sugar bush. And uh, sugar bush, you can really tell sugar bush because it has um, probably the most easily identifiable feature on sugar bush. It has these columns of flowers. So they're very, very well organized. Sort of like, well, I don't know, little columns of flowers. And um, sugarbush also has little leaves that tend to be wavy, but that there's a lot of variety in the actual, uh, you know, look of the leaves for sugarbush. Sugarbush also has reddish stem. Um, it's showing up here, but it also, there's another plant I want to show you. And come with me. This one's a little bit harder to see because it's in the shade, but 
Uh, this is a cousin to Sugarbush. It's in the same family, in the sumac family. This is Laurel sumac. And uh, notice it also has very, very red stems. There's even some red on the, on the leaf margins that you can see. Um, now what makes uh, Laurel sumac a little bit easier to identify is it has these uh, clusters of flowers that are not quite so orderly. They're more like sort of feather duster shape kinds of flowers. Uh, now Laurel sumac also has leaves that are sort of look like little bent back taco shells and that's a, a key identifying feature in Laurel sumac. Okay, we're going to do another um, uh, map location. We've just uh, walked along the trail here um, and uh, we sort of turned up. And I want to, uh, I think we're about right here, but I want you to look that way to sort of the southeast. You can see the water tower. And also, notice that there's a fence that runs right along the So, uh, and if I sort of lay my map out and point toward that, that tank, it gives me a line on my topo map, sort of like that. Um, so that's, this dot on the map is that tank, and this, these solid parallel lines is that roadway. So we're not far from the roadway, um, just a little bit along this line from the tank. So our, our current location is here. So what that means is that, and we are, by the way, we are going to walk south, which is behind you, in that direction. And as we walk, you notice that we're going to start encountering some topographic lines, which means that we're also going to start climbing. So now I'm standing on the path. We've climbed some. Uh, we are on this west-facing slope, and uh, we're. I'm standing in a ravine, and a ravine is when you can see here where the, the land, the canyon wall, sort of folds in, and then it folds out. In this case, the, the canyon wall is folding in toward the east and then folding out. So uh, that shows up on the topographic map. Um, so we were here, that was our last spot. Since then we have walked south, traveled up slope because we crossed over some topo lines, and so now we are in this ravine here. And But we're not on the canyon floor anymore, now we're pretty far up. So we're about right here, up on the canyon wall, um, in this ravine. All right, so we're going to stay on this trail. We're going to continue southward on this trail. So we've been walking south on this trail. Uh, we've gained elevation, and but now the trail is changing direction. It's going instead of sort of oriented north-south. Now the trail is going to be oriented mostly east-west, which is this direction here. So right now I'm pointing toward the east, uh, and what we've done is uh, we are now on a point where the the trail is changing direction, about 90 degrees. And so now this is on a point. Um, so on the map, that would be, we were here in this ravine, 
We continued to walk south. Now we are rounding this point here. Um, so this is that point and the, the path is changing direction. We're staying pretty much at the same elevation. So now we're at, the, at this point. And we're gonna now continue east along this trail. So I wanted to point out, so let's do a, another plant identification. This is California buckwheat. And uh, notice that the buckwheat has really small leaves. It tend to be kind of darkish green, but then it has very distinctive flower pattern. This one's just flowering out. The flowers on buckwheat seem to come up and then sp uh, spread out like in a little uh, starburst. They radiate out from a single point, and that's a real key feature in buckwheats. So we've been walking east, uh, we've rounded the point, we've been walking east on the, the in this case, the south-facing slope, and we've come to our first ravine. So if you take a look here. So now we're in our first ravine. Oh, there's a little brown squirrel. <laughs> so we're... Um, we were at this point here, and then we continued east, and now we're we are in the first ravine beyond that point. So we're about right here right now. There's lupins. So we've been continuing to walk east on this trail up on the south facing slope and now we've arrived at another ravine but this is a more of a flattened out ravine. So um, our last or previous spot was here in this ravine. Now we've been walking and uh, this ravine that we're in right now if you take a look is easily recognizable because it's got these uh, sort of holes in the canyon. I don't think I would quite call them caves. You can if you want. They're very shallow, sort of, I don't know what, what you would call them, the little holes in the canyon wall. And um, so that's a helpful identifier, especially when we're, you're down on the canyon floor, you want to figure out where you are on the canyon floor. These are a good reference point. So these caves are about right here. So that makes our location in this sort of flattened out ravine uh, right here. So here's a pretty sunflower plant that is in bloom right now following the winter rains. So this plant is called California and celia, or sometimes it's called coastal brittle bush. Okay, so we're continuing to travel east from this point here. We've rounded another point here, and now we are in the first ravine beyond this point here. So that puts us about right here on the map. So what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to walk, continue to walk east a little bit, and then there's a, a trail that will take us back down. 
We're going to uh, travel down onto the canyon floor and we're going to get back to the roadway. Okay, we came down from this location. We walked east and then dropped down on, crossed over a little bridge, and now we're back on the road. And uh, this road is starting to make a turn here. And then also you'll see it, it starts to make a, a, a turn back in the other direction. So it's like a little S-shaped turn. Um, we're also <clears throat> just a little bit to the southeast of the point, the last point we rounded, I didn't, we didn't stop and locate ourselves there, but that was the point that was just before our last marker on the map in that, that ravine. So that places us about right here. Since we're on the road south of the south facing slope, that's our next point. And I wanna, here, just follow me. I want to talk with you about another plant. So you can see this pretty plant with red berries and it has a very interesting story. Uh, and it has to do with Christmas actually. So. Um, During Christmas time, uh, people who celebrate Christmas, they uh, tend to like to uh, decorate their home. And um, in the eastern part of the country, the, in the winter time, they would go out and sometimes they would find decorative plants and they would use those decorative plants to make decorations like wreaths for their door or centerpieces for their table. And one of the plants that they found uh, it, that was abundant in the woods in the east was a plant called holly. Holly has really pretty decorative uh, leaves and also produces red fruit in the wintertime. Well, when they uh, came to California during Christmas time, they looked around and there was no holly. Uh, but they found this plant here and uh, they adopted it as a, as a substitute for holly. And they also noticed that it was a little bit bushier and woodier than holly so they gave it a name and they called it Hollywood and the hills north of Los Angeles were covered with this plant and so they named the hills after this plant the Hollywood Hills and then the city that uh, sprang up at the base of those mountains they called it Hollywood so this plant uh, although we don't really, you know, naturalists don't really call it Hollywood. You can if you want. It's an easy way to remember it. But it's otherwise known as chaparral holly or toyon. And toyon is uh, an old Spanish word for canyon. So it has an interesting story. So I want to point out another plant here, and I'm being very careful, I'm using a stick because I do not want to touch it. And that plant is right here. This is poison oak, and uh, you can recognize poison oak because it, it has leaves that come out in groups of three. So the story goes, a little uh, saying goes, uh, leaves of three, let it be. And the reason for that is uh, poison oak produces a a resin that is very uh, much an irritant and so if you're exposed to it uh, uh, you may have some sensitivity to it and it produces a rash, a scritchy, uh, scratchy, scratchy rash and some um, an itchy rash 
and uh, sometimes some uh, some blisters too. So it can be annoying and, and they can last for a couple of weeks. But otherwise they're not really dangerous unless you're a firefighter and you're fighting a fire where poison oak is on fire, then you could breathe it in and then it could uh, irritate your lungs. So that's a problem. So do not touch. Okay, we've been walking east on the, oh, I'm sorry, walking west on this road. And uh, now we come to a spot where, we, if we look north on that south-facing slope that we walked on before, you can see the, those little caves up there, which is, uh, which is a good little reference point for us. So um, using those, because we, we did mark our location just below those when we were on the trail, but now we're on the road. So they help, are very, very useful, reduce south of those caves. And so that would mean, that would put us about right here on the road. Okay, another location. We've been walking west on this road. And we have reached a location where if I look behind me to the north, uh, I can see the point that we were, we rounded when we were up on that path up on that on the canyon wall there if you look behind me you can um, kind of pointing to it it's kind of hard to see uh, there's a sycamore tree that's sort of blocking the view but that's the that's the point there you can see where the canyon wall basically disappears toward the west and that means that the uh, it's, it's uh, anyway that's the point so uh, we're basically due south of that point uh, so I'm going to put us about right here on the road. So we're going to continue east to this intersection. We've got basically two more points that we're going to travel to and a, a couple more plants that we're going to do and then we'll be done. So we're almost done. Okay, so we have uh, come to this intersection uh, where we've got a th basically, I don't know, three trails intersecting here. It's an easy spot to identify. Um, so that would put us right right here on the trail. So we have just a short distance to go to finish this loop. One of the remarkable features of Oak Canyon is uh, it has these kind of unusual power poles. And if you, you get up close to them and bang on them, you can hear that they're metal, they're steel. Um, and the reason that they're steel is because uh, the, the previous poles used to be made out of soft pine, probably lodgepole pine. And there are woodpeckers that live in the canyon called acorn woodpeckers. And what they do is when the uh, oak trees here in Oak Canyon, when they produce seeds, which are acorns, they produce them all at once. And so there's a super abundance of acorns. There's too many to eat at any one time. So what the acorn woodpeckers do, the pattern that they do, is that they collect acorns and they go up to one of these uh, trees and they find a hole. Well, actually, first they drill a hole with their beak de -de 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 -de, into the... Uh, the, of a tree, it was an oak tree, and then the power poles came in, the original power poles, and they were soft pine. So the acorn woodpeckers shifted their preference from oak trees to soft pine, and they started drilling holes like crazy in all these power poles. Well, after a while, there were so many holes in the power poles, the power poles were weakened, and they lost their structural strength. So the operators then had to replace the soft pine power poles with these steel power poles. And it's kind of funny, it took a while for the acorn woodpeckers to figure this out because I would uh, observe wood acorn woodpeckers traveling to the top of the pole where there are little holes there. You might see some bees. And they would just keep dropping acorns in that hole and it would never fill up. You could hear the acorn traveling down the, to the bottom of the pole. So that's why we have steel poles at Oak Canyon. 
So here's, uh, I think, one of the last plants we're going to be doing. There's, um, there aren't very many of these, so this is kind of rare here at Oak Canyon. This is a white alder, uh, this tree here. And you can see it, it is a, a tree that goes straight up and has a, generally has a single trunk. Sometimes they have split trunks. Um, they have a very, very smooth, thin, silvery bark, which uh, is a, a good indicator of white alder. So that's another one of your trees. I think we have just a few more plants left. I want to point out the uh, this tree here. It's a it's called a sycamore. Uh, probably you're familiar with them. Uh, one of the easy ways to recognize them is they have this very thin, light colored but very flaky bark. It's the bark seems to flake off. Uh, it also has, and these are brand new leaves that are coming out. It has uh, very large, star shaped leaves. These are just young ones, so they're not quite that big very much. But you can see if you look up where I'm pointing. There's another sycamore tree right nearby us, and you can see they grow very, very tall, and then they've got these sort of light colored, but very large um, star-shaped leaves, which is a good way to identify a sycamore. So we're done. Um, we have completed our loop. We've identified a bunch of plants. I don't remember which ones we identified, but about 10 maybe. Um, so uh, <laughs> I want to show you uh, where we are. We're right back sort of where we started, uh, not quite where we started, but on this road here before we went up on the canyon wall. So our path went something like from this spot, which is sort of where we are right now. We traveled up this trail um, and then we went due south along the west facing slope into this ravine continued south rounded the point went into the uh, second ravine around the point traveled to this other broad ravine where we saw the caves around this point into another ravine still walking up uh, high up on the canyon wall uh, and then we dropped down onto the canyon floor Walked along the roadway, saw some toy on, um, around the corner, looked up and we saw the caves again, uh, continued west, uh, we looked up and saw the point again, went to the intersection, and then made our way back uh, to our, our original spot here. So we're done.